All right, so I'm going to sign on as a member of the club. Um, the first thing that club members will see if they're a part of a team with a uh, session for that day, if the coach has done lineups and made them public, they're going to see exactly uh, today's lineup. So here Anne can see she's in the sixth seat of this boat. She knows everybody else that's in the boat. And then down here, there's the session plan for the day that the coach entered in the system. And she could drop a quick note to the coach, um, things like I'm running late. Uh, and the coach gets email notification when athletes enter notes uh, for a session. So that's the first screen they'd see. Again, that's if there's a session um, today and lineups are public. Uh, a very important screen here is the attendance plans. And this is all the sessions that are out on the calendar right now for the teams that Anne's part of. And she's part of multiple teams, a midday team, a morning team, a master's all team. Anyway, from here, she just toggles in and out of sessions for the ones she cannot attend. By default, most clubs just use the, um, the default attendances that they're going to be there. And then only folks that can't make a particular session just come to the screen and toggle out to indicate they can't make a pr particular practice. So coaches always know who should be at a practice um, at our club. I am part of the Manning, uh, morning masters team and we have a policy where by 8 p.m. the night before, uh, we're asked to make sure our attendance plans are set because our coach gets into iCrew soon after eight and he does lineups for our team. Um, and he'll even release them the night before or he'll release them early in the morning as we're heading to the boathouse. Uh, okay. So that's kind of policy. Uh, included in this list can, are regattas that um, are on the schedule. Um, so they can toggle in and out of regattas. And lots of other options here to, to view their attendance history. Um, uh, some other things around families. If you've got parents and juniors in the system, there's some family features. But the next tab I'll show is this My Dates Away. And this is just a place to conveniently drop in a date range where they're going to be away from the boathouse. That way they don't have to toggle out of like two weeks of sessions if they're going to be on vacation. Uh, has a journal entry system where the original design here was just for people to write a journal about how practice went or how a, a workout they did on their own. Uh, but recently I uh, changed it so you could import your concept to logbook into iCrew. And the nice thing here is you can make these journal entries visible to the coach and the coach can actually see um, the different row, rowing you've done on the ERG. So it captures the total meters rowed and the time and the average splits per minute. And then some additional data comes in from the concept to book. In addition, if your club uh, tracks volunteer hours, you can log a journal entry that captures your volunteer hours. Uh, you can also capture coaches hours through a journal entry. Test results, this is all about ergometer tests. Uh, personal records are displayed at the top uh, with a graph available so I can peek into Anne's 2000 meter tests that she's taken over the time. And she sees her results um, both regular results and weight adjusted results. This, the weight adjusted uses the concept two formula. So test results can be um, captured completely both uh, for a particular distance or time and uh, athletes are, uh, can be allowed to enter their own results or they can be collected by a coach and entered by the coach. And then there's document tracking. Uh, best way to show this is just a code of conduct form that the person's supposed to read and sign you can create, upload your PDF version of that code of conduct. So they could print it and hand write in here and sign it, but they could also just drop in and e-sign it. Oh, that's good. Uh, so any document that really just requires somebody to read and acknowledge they've read it. Um, but also other documents can be collected and tracked in iCrew for whatever uh, other items you might have. And they might be forms that are printed out and handed in, but if you want to track it electronically in terms of who's handed in their forms, that can be done here. Okay. And then payments can be collected. Uh, the club would set up a PayPal account if you don't already have one. And then you can represent fee items in iCrew um, with the ability for members to click a pay button uh, that take them right into PayPal to do the money transaction part of it. And uh, as soon as they're done paying, uh, PayPal notifies iCrew that the payment's done. So you can actually track uh, that payments have been received and, and know who hasn't paid items. 
Um, the My Teams tab just shows all the links to all the teams that the par person is part of. It shows coaches for that team and their email address if they need to be contacted. And then each athlete has a profile. There are quite a few fields in the profile, but most of them are optional. Uh, the minimum required data is first name, last name, email address. And then because iCrew uh, does some calculations for average boat ages, um, we do like to collect the birth date. Uh, the year is the most important part. Everybody could put January 1st of their birth year if they wanted to keep that private, but the birth year helps us calculate average age of a boat as lineups are made. Um, the other thing is emergency contact information is required since this is an athletic uh, it's a sport, so injuries might happen. So we require that to, to be entered. And if you want weight adjusted numbers, you can require their weight to be entered and that's kept private, only seen by the athletes and coaches. Uh, across the top is just quick navigation to some different pages that are useful. The today page shows quick access to everything happening today and tomorrow. Um, you can change the date and go ahead a week from now if you wanted and you'd see that date plus the date following. Uh, there's a club home page that gives access to a bunch of stuff. Uh, the calendar is the session calendar. So this is visible by everybody. Um, and by default, they could show only the sessions that they are attending on the calendar, but they could also see what's happening across the entire club, across all teams. And then the boat reservation system, uh, it makes it easy to just pop in and for a particular date and time, you can search what's available. Maybe you wanna take a single out. Um, you can grab a single and some oars and make a reservation. And then messaging, um, you'll see more about messaging when I flip over to the coach's admin view, but uh, you can send messages out of iCrew mm -hmm. uh, that go out as an email. Um, you'll see more of that, but Discussions are online message boards uh, across various channels, and these channels are ones that you define for your club. You can see these, ac these activities. Um, these are all messages posted on iCrew in a particular discussion channel, and somebody can make a post, and then folks can respond all online. Um, and a, a, the person making the, the original post can include graphics too, like uploading a picture if they wanted. Uh, but it's just a, a way to facilitate a discussion around any topic and folks can subscribe uh, or follow channels and then also indicate whether they want email uh, notifications when any activity happens in those channels. Mm -hmm. So this is just a list of all the channels that are defined in this fictitious org. So that was a very quick, like 10 minute overview of the members view of iCrew. Any questions before I show you coaches admins view? Uh no, it looks awesome. Okay. So now I'm going to swap over. Same club. I'm going to log in as um, a coach for the club. Actually, I'm, I'm logged in as the administrator for the club. So uh, same log on page, but now they drop into a much different view. Now, if the person logging in is a coach or an admin and they're also a rower, just know they can get to their personal page here where they can toggle in and out of sessions, have their own profile and all that. But where they, nor where they drop by default is this coach's homepage. And now they've got access to all the functionality listed over here on the left, which I'll step through uh, just to give you an idea of what's on these tabs. So at the highest level is the club and the club um, IRC would have a, pro or you already do have a profile where you can specify your administrators. And then the typical set of stuff like the full name of the club, the website, if you have one, uh, address, city, state, zip, so on and so forth. Um, administrators, only an, an existing administrator can add or change the administrators for the club. And you can view an administrator as like a super user. They can do everything and anything, see everything and anything. So most clubs keep the administrator list short. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when I get to teams, um, you'll see how you can specify team coaches. Uh, the other interesting thing here that I'll just talk about briefly is these registration profiles. So this is just a way in iCrew to set up a profile for a club member. And you can see here the samples are, it's a morning masters person or a varsity boy rower or a varsity girl rower. Um, the key thing behind a registration profile is when they go into iCrew to register and create an account, they can pick the profile that matches them. 
And what iCrew does is make sure they land on the correct team. So a varsity boy probably would, they have to land on the varsity boys team, but also there might be an all juniors team that you want to make sure they get on. Mm -hmm. In addition, when they drop onto those teams, any document or fee items that are associated with those teams are immediately on and accessible by the rower. So that's just a quick overview of what a registration profile can do for you. Um, then the club is divided into teams. Um, a team you can also view, of, view as a group. So if I look at the teams list here, you can see I have a junior parents team. Now that's really a group, the junior mm -hmm. parents don't row, but we call it a team in here and all the parents of juniors can be on that team. And then you got the typical list of rowing teams. Um, you could have a team that represents your, uh, your board of directors or whatever else you want. So you can make as many teams as you want. And if I bring up a particular team like the Masters AM team, I can look at their team profile and notice I have four coaches designated here. Um, I can change the coach designations and administrator uh, can do that. And then you've got some, just a typical profile for this team with some descriptions, the name of the default name for t sessions as they get created and then some options we won't go through, but just know that every team has this profile that can be updated. Um, so from the Teams tab, access to a lot of things, including the roster, uh, the session list, but we'll talk about sessions in a moment. Uh, the next tab over here is members. So this is just full access to your entire membership and you can get to their individual profiles. Um, you could look at documents and payments and so forth. Sessions, these are the practice sessions and or regattas that you've created by team. So if I want to create a big group of uh, sessions for the Masters AM team, um, because they all meet certain days of the week at the same time, I can say new session, but I'm gonna do it in bulk. And I'm gonna say, let's go out into the year a bit more past this pandemic mess we're in and go just create a bunch of sessions for the month of July. And this is the morning team. So I'm just gonna say 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and they meet Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays at the boathouse. The default attendance setting is yes, people are gonna attend. That means as soon as these are generated, everybody on the squad is toggled into the session. Um, Again, if you can't attend a session, you just go to that one session and toggle out or whatever sessions you can't attend. Uh, and then I click create sessions down here and notice it'll generate all these sessions and put them on the calendar immediately. So very easy to create sessions. You can create them as far in advance as you want, but most I think most coaches do two or three months at a time. Uh, there's no real need for going farther out uh, unless there's a particular thing you want to do and fill the calendar up, but um, I then pop into the calendar and if I go out to July, you'll see all the sessions have gotten created. Uh, as soon as a session is created, now you've got individual records that you can update for that particular day. Um, and that those, those individual records, if I look at uh, back to today, let me pick up tomorrow morning's master's practice off the calendar. Now I can go in and do a specific um, workout plan for that day. And in addition, uh, I can do the lineups for that session. Uh, I'll show you a lineups page that already has some lineups done, but you'll get a sense of what the lineups page looks like. So lineups, are, um, you have your boat inventory and your oars inventory at the top of the page. And you, if you wanna do a lineup, let's say in the, this boat, the Eden, I can just drag the boat down. I can also just single tick, click the boat and click down here and pull it in. I can grab some oars for those boats. And I actually got a message that the K oars were over allocated. It's because the K oars okay. have already been used by this Genesee four. And I tried to, I'm trying to use them again for an eight. And we only probably have eight in the boathouse. So my crew can warn you about that. Uh, notice the color coding comes in for the boats and you can change your, your rigging configuration in iCrew. So if you happen to have like a, um, a bucket seat four, uh, this would come in 
perhaps uh, red, green, green, red. And if you keep that up to date in the boat uh, in the system, then you're always going to have the right configuration show up on the lineups page. Uh, I've got eight person boats up in this top part. And then the second grid uh, defaults to four person boats, but it can also be expanded to show eight person boats. And all your rowers that are planning to be at the session are down here in this bullpen. Um, I've already pulled them up into the, the lineup. So to just to bring somebody up, you can, can again, drag and drop. Uh, you can also just click single time and put them into a seat. Um, notice too, when I click the tile, their little pop-up comes up telling you more about that person. Uh, that's most useful when you're doing a regatta lineup and the athletes can put in their event preferences. So you can see that Anne would like mostly to row in a women's eight, but she also likes the women's four event and a mixed eight and a single. And you can disable that pop-up if you like. Uh, moving tiles around here is a drag and drop operation. Um, notice if, that Anne is designated as a port rower. She's got this little on her profile. Mm -hmm. She's marked port as a preference. And I've just dropped her into a starboard seat and notice it highlights in yellow, just to kind of tell you that um, Anne will probably not like you if you do that too. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's the gist of doing lineups for a regular practice session. Notice too, as I move boats, uh, mo move people around in boats, the average eight age, um, this is showing you the average age of that boat, uh, just as you move people around. So dynamically, you'll always know the average age. The idea there might be that you put a nice lineup together and you want to see what age it is because you might want to keep that in mind for a regatta. Um, the weight, average weight of the boat is also um, calculated for you. This is all fake data, so I'm getting not a true number of the average weight. But mm -hmm. if everybody was honest, uh, if you could see that you might be put too big a group of people into a medium weight four or something like that. So that's the lineups. Um, this page can be expanded to include up to four, uh, four rows of eight. So 32 boats in a given single session can be, um, can be done. Um, yeah, the other thing too that is very handy and one of the key features that was uh, important when I built iCruise, we don't have dedicated coxswains at our club. We as masters rowers all rotate through the coxswain seat. So mm -hmm. we used to have to keep track of how many times it had been since we last coxed. Now iCrew does that for us. Oh, so wow. every time, if we get dropped into a coxswain seat today, then tomorrow we're at the bottom of the list because we just coxed. Right. So people at the top of the list uh, are the ones that ought to be the most eligible for coxing that, that day's session. Yeah, that's the lineups page. Um, pretty, pretty key page for yeah. iCrew. Um, and I'll show you how we do a regatta. Uh, I'll come back to that, but let me just march through the rest of this left side. So we already saw documents. This is where you create a new document and you specify which teams a document applies to. So if I look at that code of conduct that we saw earlier, this is the document profile page and all the teams are listed down here, but you can see only certain teams are checked. That means that that code of conduct only applies to those teams. And that, goes the same for fee items. You may have a fee item that is only for master's rowers and a different fee item for juniors. So you would check the master's teams for one fee item, create another fee item for the juniors and check all the junior teams. And here's where you create a brand new test. So you can just say, perhaps the varsity boys are gonna do a 2K. Um, we'll call it a 2K baseline. And maybe that's gonna happen on the 20th and it's 2000 meters. And optionally, you can catch intervals at 500 meter splits. And as soon as you click save and continue, you've got a new test sitting there uh, waiting for the 20th and you get out there and get those tests done and enter the results. As I mentioned too, um, you can allow athletes to enter their own results from their phone. There's a very nice page. As soon as they're done with their 2K and they've caught their breath, they can pop into iCrew and put their results in. And then we've got all the shells. So you can create your entire inventory of boats here in iCrew. Uh, I'll bring up one for an example again. There's a profile for the boat. Typical information you need. What kind of um, rigging can it handle? Is it sweep skull or either? What's the current rigging? And then here's the seat configuration so that you can get that 
red green red green coloring on the um, on the lineups page. Also, you can designate owners of shells. So if you do have privately owned boats, uh, you can specify who that member is in the club that owns the boat. And then the key thing here to allow boats to be reserved is this checkbox. So non-owners non allowed to reserve. If that box is checked, the boat will show up in the res reservation system. Um, some key things about reservation systems is that the boat, each boat has a rower's proficiency required. Uh, the best example here is a skinny racing single, probably is gonna be marked as advanced. And everybody's member profile, there is a setting that the coach or an admin sets that specifies the rower's proficiency. So in other words, a novice rower will never be able to take out a racing single. Mm -hmm. In addition, every rower, there's the boat size that they're allowed to take out. So you might let somebody take out a double but they're not yet ready to take a single out and that's on the member profile. So if they weren't allowed to take a single, they'll never be offered a single in the reservation system. And then your inventory of ores, the same thing. You can add them all in there, update the profiles, keep that information up to date. Uh, also, you can put your launches in here and then this kind of a bucket of everything else. If you want to, put in all your ergometers and Cox boxes and oh, yeah. other things, you can put all that in. I think that's what Andrew's using right now in iCrew is um, the inventories uh, lists for shells, ores, and other assets. Here's the discussion um, tab, and this is where you create your channels. Remember those miscellaneous channels we saw? Uh, a couple things to note, again, each member decides which channels they care about. So they check the follow list and then optionally they can get an email alert if somebody posts a new discussion item or uh, any uh, response to an existing item. Also, a channel can be limited to a single team. So here's a novice girls channel. It's limited to just one single team. That means nobody in the club, unless they're on the novice girls team can uh, access and see that channel. Uh, events are meant to represent non-rowing events, club potluck, uh, a banquet. Um, you could even say an event is the, the kids' spring yeah. break that spans multiple days and it mm -hmm. will show up on the calendar. Um, but events are similar to sessions in that they're meant for non-rowing events, but they can also be, you can track attendance, like have people toggle into the event that is your banquet so you get an accurate count of who's going to be coming to the banquet. And locations, uh, this is just where your clubs meet. Uh, everybody gets a boathouse entry here. They can rename it to be the name of your boathouse. Um, but you can also put things in, like if you do winter conditioning at a different site, you can add that uh, location in the system. And then notice we capture latitude and longitude, so GPS coordinates. And the reason for that is there is this notion of checking into a session uh, means that people are physically present that day. So before the session started, you had indication of who planned to be there. This is a page that can be used in the boathouse for people to come in. As they show up at the boathouse, they come in and can click their tile to represent they're physically present. Uh, but the nice part about this is that people can use their phone to do that. And the phone um, asks permission of the user to use their GPS coordinates. So if we see they're actually in proximity of the boathouse based on their GPS coordinates, they can check them in automatically and they don't have to find this uh, computer in the boathouse to do it. So at our boathouse, we use this religiously. Everybody has to check in because it tells the coach who's really here versus who planned to be here. And most folks check in on their own phone, but we do set up a tablet and some folks walk up to it and just tap their tile. Um, th this whole aspect of attendance tracking uh, and checking in has helped us get on the water very quickly in the I morning. Imagine. Yeah, so this is literally in the past, when I first started rowing in 2016, well, I did learn to row in 2015, joined the master squad. Um, we would take up to 20, 25 minutes just trying to get things organized before hitting the water. Uh, we used to walk in, go to a magnet board, find our magnet, turn it from upside down to right side up, yeah. Meanwhile, the coach is kind of sitting there trying to do lineups. And then we had to walk over to this board where we were doing tracking our last coxing count. 
So once the coach kind of had lineups, then she'd grab this paper and try to figure out who should be coxing today. Uh, took forever. Now we literally get to the boathouse. Some people pull orgs down to warm up. Others just kind of do some calisthenics because coaches coming from the office over to the boathouse and putting lineups on a big screen, seriously five minutes after the session started. And so we're hitting the water and spending much more time on the water. Um, the nice thing too about the screen, you might've noticed the, the person's um, seat assignment and their boat assignments listed on their tile, but they can also see that from their phone. All right, so across the top here, uh, it's a longer list of, of just net places to navigate um, for a coach or an admin. One recently new feature that is really just all about customizing what uh, a coach or an admin sees when they log on is this notion of a dashboard. And I'm going to log off real quick and come back in under my own profile to show you a very useful dashboard I have set up for our comp coach. So here I've just logged in um, and I've come immediately to this dashboard. And the reason I came here is because on the dashboard, I set a little flag that says, show this dashboard after logging in. So the idea is, sure, somebody might need access to all this functionality that we just stepped through. But let's pretend I'm the competitive team coach. What I care most about, I have built into this dashboard. I have gone to pages and tagged them to be part of this dashboard that I named the comp team. Mm -hmm. And I also have another dashboard where I just have tiles to quickly get me to all the regattas for the masters. Um, so that way now I can just focus in on what mm -hmm. I want to do with that team. And I can update the dashboards, change any of the tile names, delete a tile, bring in a new one, um, all through just customization. So that re this feature has really helps people get focused on functionality they use most often in iCrew and gets them right to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very easy to create a dashboard too. If you happen to land on a page that you want to put on a dashboard, um, here's the page. You click this little nice. yellow button and click um, add this page to a dashboard, continue, and then you can create a brand new dashboard or you can add it to an existing dashboard. So very easy to put, get pages get, to get a dashboard built. Uh, we saw the today page when I was signed on as a rower. This uh, same thing, it's just giving you a quick access to all the sessions for the day. Uh, the club homepage, lots of buttons that are all available back here on the home page, but it also lists all your teams here and you can put in related links in iCrew for any other web pages like your JL Racing page or um, any other systems or web pages out in the internet that are related to your club that can be listed on the home page. Rowdy saw the session calendar. You have different views here, defaults to monthly, but you can drop into a week view, day view, and just move back and forth here. Uh, the club roster is just a very quick way to get to the entire roster list. And there's lots of pages here where you're gonna see lists with this little search box. And the search box is very powerful because if I need to find Ann Mason, I can just type in Ann, or I can just type in Mason and it quickly gets down to the list of people uh, in the club. And then here's the send message page. Um, this is where you can send out a mess email message to your crew. You also have an option to, to send a text message. This does require that the athletes and members put in their mobile phone number and their mobile carrier on their profile. And it can't be used for long, extensive messages. The idea behind the text message is to get a short little blurb out to them via text message. Uh, but mostly, you know, you can just think of this as a way to get a message out. Uh, but the nice thing here is that when I click the BCC line, which I personally like to use, I have access to all the teams. So yeah. if I only need to message the comp masters, there you go. Everybody's on the BCC line of the comp masters team. But if I also need to include I can come back here and add more people, uh, maybe the fitness class roster. I can bring them into. Okay. Put in a subject and type in a message. And you can do some formatting here. You can bold that. I can paste in a link to a web page, that sort of thing. And then I'd click send message and an email would go out. Um, the send message functionality. Um, 
is used in a few different places. Uh, a good example might be for today's session. Uh, let's say today's session has to be canceled, which unfortunately that's happening a lot. Mm -hmm. If you were to go to that today's session, like this midday, master's midday, and bring up the practice session, right at the top of the page, you have quick access to send a message to everybody attending. Uh -huh. And I can say, let's use the BCC line and click compose and send message. I very quickly brought up the screen with everybody in the BCC line, subject matter filled in, a link to that session lineups, if that's useful, but really maybe if we needed to cancel the session, you can say session canceled or whatever note. And that can be, um, you also have the option as you cancel a session to automatically send an email. But the main thing here is showing how quick you, quickly iCrew can help you get a message to a particular group, in this case, those attending a specific session. Uh, we saw discussions earlier. This is just all the discussions. Um, you should know that some of these discussions, they can be marked um, important, so they're highlighted in yellow. Uh, you can also, as you create a new discussion, you have the option to tag it as a um, announcement only. Um, and that way, nobody can post responses to the, to the message you send. So it keeps the traffic down. It just really meant, I need to get this out. Here's the message. This isn't meant to be a back and forth of people. So you can mark it as announcement only. And then the personal page I had already talked about for coaches and rowers who happen to also, or coaches and admins that happen to also be rowers. Um, we're a little over, but I do want to show you regatta lineups if you have the time, just so you see the, okay. that feature. Let me log off and get back in at my fake club so I don't do any accidental updates here in my real club. And I'll go to the calendar and I have a regatta session already created here, uh, the regionals. So it looks like a regular session, but there's this one important toggle that has been turned on. This is a regatta plan. And it has the ability by name to go search the Regatta Central site. Oh, and wow. in this case, I've already gone out to the Regatta Central site and found the Northwest Youth, Youth Regionals. So here's a link that would open up the Regatta in Regatta Central. Uh, but also right here in iCrew at the bottom of this page are all the events mm -hmm. for that um, for that Regatta. So um, that's from just there, if I, that's just pulled in from Regatta Central. Yeah, it's uh, we query Regatta Central directly, and it's pulled in here. So there's no, you're not typing this in. If things change in Regatta Central, if you were to bring up this page, you'd see the latest and greatest. Lineups are very similar to a regular session, although you can use the same boat multiple times. So you can see I've have the Eden in here for a couple different races. Um, let me bring down the Swifty with some e ors, and now also this row is something you didn't see in a regular practice session. It's the mm -hmm. event row. So if I put in event 31 for this boat, it pulls back a link to all the other entries in event 31, brings back the title, and of course, if Regatta Central had an accurate start time, you'd see the, the right. uh, scheduled time. And now you've got a lineup for that uh, for that event 31 that you can fill in. Uh, other than that, this lineups page is very much the same. Um, the rowers can, of course, be put in multiple boats because it's a regatta, so you can drop Terry in as many events as Terry can handle for the day. Mm -hmm. All right. I think I covered the main points. Wow. Well, this looks amazing.